This video is a direct sequel to the I Squared C Bus Part 1 video. As always, you can find the written guide linked in the description of this video. And if you are new to MicroPython or Thani, make sure to head over to the video called Getting Started with MicroPython and Thani before continuing. The setup, shown here, is the same as the setup from Part 1, except that I will remove the jumper connecting the int pin on the MPU6050 to D5. If the main script on your Node MCU is the final script from the last video which uses the interrupt, then you may have issues uploading a new program if you do not remove this jumper. In this video, we will go over how to use the SSD1306 OLED display module using the SSD1306 library in MicroPython. Unlike the MPU6050, the SSD1306 was determined to be popular enough to get a library for it built into MicroPython itself. Let's use this library to access the SSD1306 display with the Node MCU. Open Thani and press the stop button at the top of the window to get an open REPL. Then in the REPL, import SSD1306 I squared C from the SSD1306 library. Then import pin and I2C from machine. Set a variable called I2C to be an I2C object with SEL equal to pin 5 and SDA equal to pin 4. Then create a variable called display and set it to be an SSD1306 I2C object with the first parameter being the display width set to 128, the second parameter being the display height set to 64, and the third parameter being the I2C object defined above. Now that a SSD1306 I2C object is declared, pixels can be written to the display. To set all of the pixels of the display on or off, the fill function can be used. Let's turn all of the display's pixels on by giving the fill function a parameter of 1. Then, to update the display to show what was written to it, we can use the show function. Now, all of the pixels of the display can be turned off by giving the fill function a parameter of 0, followed by calling the show function again. Let's pause to summarize what is going on. So far, we have initialized an I2C bus and given the SSD1306 display commands using simple fill and show functions. If you are following from the previous video, you may remember that slave devices like the SSD1306 need a device address in order to be given commands from the master device. In part 1, we called I2C.scan and found the slave device addresses for both the MPU6050 and the SSD1306. The SSD1306's address was found to be decimal 60 or hexadecimal 3C. So how have you been able to communicate with the display without the use of its slave device address? The answer is through the SSD1306 library that we have been using. If we look at SSD1306.py in the MicroPython source code, which is linked in the description of this video, we can see in the SSD1306 I2C class declaration that there is a parameter called adder, which is by default set to OX3C or hexadecimal 3C. This adder variable can then be used throughout the class when needed. At this point, you may be wondering where the fill function that we just called in the REPL is, as it doesn't appear to be in the SSD1306 I2C class. It isn't located in the class because that function is inherited. In the class declaration, you can see that SSD1306 I2C inherits from SSD1306. This class is located above it in the same file, but the fill function doesn't appear to be in this class either. In the declaration for SSD1306, we can see that it inherits from something called frame buffer, and there's a link to it above the class. This link brings us to a documentation page going over frame buffer. On this page, we can find the fill function along with functions for drawing individual pixels, lines, rectangles, and even writing text. Let's go back to Thani and write some text on the display. In the REPL, call the text function on the display object. For the first parameter, we enter the text we want to write on the screen. Let's put hello world. The second and third parameters are the x and y coordinates of the top left corner of the text. However, the coordinate system for writing to a display is slightly different than a typical coordinate system. In this system, the top left of the display is 0, 0, and positive x coordinates go to the right, and positive y coordinates go down. Let's put our text at the top left corner by entering 0 for the second and third parameters. Then enter display.show to update the display. You should now see your text appear at the top left of the display. The last thing that I want to demonstrate with the display is the importance of clearing it. 
If I display more text at the same location and call show, you will see that the resulting output is overlapping text. This is why it is important to remember to call the fill function with a zero parameter to clear the display. There are two exercises that you can do on your own to reinforce the information from both parts of this I2C guide. The first exercise is to write a main.py program that reads the latest accelerometer, gyroscope, and temperature data from the MPU 6050 IMU every 500 milliseconds, and then immediately displays it on the SSD 1306 display. Use of the int pin on the MPU 6050 is not necessary. The second exercise is to edit the solution of your first exercise to reduce the number of read from mem calls made. For example, when getting the temperature data from the MPU 6050 IMU, you're probably making two calls that are each reading one byte. Recall that the third parameter in the read from mem function is the number of bytes to be read. Since the data we are reading is in sequential order in memory, hexadecimal 41 followed by hexadecimal 42, both of these memory addresses can be read by starting at the memory address hexadecimal 41 and reading two bytes. Change the first exercise's solution so that all reads to the MPU 6050 are done two bytes at a time. The output should look exactly the same as the first exercise. As always, the solutions to these exercises can be found at the end of the written guide on our website. You can find the link in the description of this video. This concludes this guide. If you wish to learn more about I2C, you could try getting some other I2C modules and use their data sheets to program them. There are also many registers on the MPU 6050 IMU that were not used in this guide, so you could try taking a look at what they do on the datasheet. Lastly, this guide used a built-in MicroPython library to interface with the SSD 1306 display. You could try comparing this library with the datasheet for the SSD 1306, which is linked in the description of this video. This concludes this guide. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech, where we have write-ups that go along with our videos on YouTube. We also just released our first product called the Atlas Kit, which is available now in our Etsy store and ships to the US and Canada. This kit comes with a Node MCU and all of the requisite parts to be soldered into the expansion board that the Node MCU fits into. This kit is our beginner's platform for getting started with electronics and programming. In the future, we will be posting guides and project ideas for the Atlas Kit, along with our usual Node MCU guides to our website and YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.